right, welcome back to another episode of Comics, guys. We appreciate you guys joining us. Uh, this is episode 60, uh, six zero, about the same age as Ash. Uh, so what let's is, go ahead. episode 69? That would be Andres. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think it's Andres. I think Andres has episode 69. I don't know. I don't know why he looks up at the heavens. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he just starts loving. For some reason, you're cutting out. Moving on, sir. It's all good. Uh, as you guys know, uh, uh, this is, or as you may not know, this week we're starting <laughs> rotation again. Ash said, uh, "This is the top of the lineup." <laughs> but really, is it that bad? Yeah. Damn <laughs> 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 Had a hat on. God damn it. <laughs> Oh shit! All right, well. <laughs> this all stays in. <laughs> That's what she said. My there name is Luis. Hello, guys. <laughs> and Air Air over there is Ash. I was last. You are last, my friend. You are last. back of the bus. It sucks. You love it. <laughs> is that better? Can you guys hear me better? I hope so. We'll yeah. find out soon. <laughs> All right. All right. So, uh, as I was saying before, I sounded like a goddamn robot uh, earlier, a few seconds ago. Uh, this is episode 60. I want to go ahead and thank everybody for joining us, downloading us, tuning in. Um, we greatly appreciate it. And we're going to go ahead and jump into our drink. So, I'm going to go ahead and throw it over to Luis. Luis, my friend, what are you drinking? Uh, today we are drinking two stars dose. Uh, it is a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, Jefferson County, Louisville, Kentucky, 43 alcohol by the volume 86 proof, two stars. It's good shit. You've never caught a football in your life, right? Cause no. you catch it like that. I caught it like this. Yeah. <laughs> caught it with his face. Uh, it's, uh, it's a, uh, really good, uh, very much on the affordable side, as you can see. It's already done. Um, uh, I think it runs for like 20 25 bucks, and it tastes much yeah. better. Yeah, it tastes much better than uh, a lot of whiskeys that are in that range. So, uh, hi, Evan Williams. I hear you. <laughs> really good quality tasting. I'll try that alcohol for uh, for not a lot of scratch. So, cheers, two stars. Cheers. Uh, where can you find it? Uh, this one I actually bought at Target. Nice, very cool. Target, yes, sir. Oh, okay. I didn't know Target has whiskey or uh, alcohol. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do. Sure yeah, do. no, no, they have it. They like sure Walmart, do. Where they add it in a grocery store. That's funny because yeah. uh, when I used to live in East LA, the Target in East LA had absolutely no liquor. Yeah, really? I've never seen liquor there. That makes and, sense though because it's in East LA. <laughs> The other target I go in. Such a dick, Luis. So, trying to wait for Hispanic. Okay, it's our first show today. It's our first show, guys. (laughs) (laughs) Cheers to technical difficulties. Yeah, I know exactly. Um, Okay, sorry. Two stars. Two stars. So, and going to throw it over to Ash real quick. Ash? Hey, everybody. Uh, I know uh, uh, we did this last year, and, and hopefully I remember because it'll be the week of. Um, it is my mom's birthday tomorrow, and uh, so I would like to take a shot to my mom. Uh, thank you guys for doing this. You guys have been a fucking my safety net, my rock. I love doing this every Thursday. They're started during COVID where you guys were the only people I would talk to all week, minus texts, minus whatever. And it's become like, not to quote fucking Vin Diesel, but it's become family. So thank you guys. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, mama. As Adam Sandler would say, you may proceed. All right. 
And let's see. So last week, uh, Andres had the show and he actually uh, had a recommendation uh, for me uh, to go ahead and watch the HBO uh, series Rome. But before we get into that, I'm going to go ahead and throw it over to Ash because Ash had uh, the recommendation from Carmen. And Ash, what was uh, Carmen's recommendation to you last night? My recommendation was, I'm going to I'm gonna say it wrong, but it's the murder show on Hulu. If you give me one quick second, I'll look that up. Um, what murder, I do murder, like about it murder is... Murder in the building? Uh, yeah. Murder in the building. <laughs> Martin Short, uh, Steve Martin, and um, Selena Gomez. Um, For people that don't follow true crime podcasts, when you find out another person's following it, it becomes almost like a, uh, almost like a reality show, not reality show, but in the, where you go with it, like, can can you believe it? Who do you think it is? And blah, blah, blah. Like it's a whodunit, but it's like, it's like, and then, oh my God, it's, it's, uh, it's so good. Like me and my, me and my friend, uh, Valerie, like if we find a good one, we follow it. And then we pretty much just talk all day long. Um, these three people, all of different ages, all of different, um, what do I want to say, personalities, mm-hmm. they all find that they're into the same podcast. And that's what first brings them together. And then there's a that's murder good. in the building, which is the name of the show which makes them become like, it's almost like a real life one where they're trying to figure out uh, who murdered, who did this, who did that. Um, But one of them has a past involving the murdered person. And that's all I will give it. But it is Steve Martin not wanting to be bothered with anybody. But once he finds out you're into the podcast, he's like, yeah, yeah, no, like shut the fuck up but what do you think happened like he still wants he wants to be left alone but he's he's this is what's bringing him out of his shell mm-hmm. and then there's a director that was uh, a washed up director that that um his whole story is he's trying to get back on his feet and he's uh doing a bunch of things where he's still trying to live up to that reality he had at one time uh, he had this much success. It's been 20 years and, and he still thinks of himself that way where everybody's kind of whatever with him. Um, and then there's Selena Gomez, which good as fuck. But, uh, <laughs> but it's a great show. I haven't, I saw the first two episodes. I know I'm hooked, but it's like fringe. I know I'm hooked, but I'm going to like... Uh, you're gonna I'm like into on it. season four of The Flash, and it's like on season eight. Like that's where I'm at with it. Like I will catch yeah. up and then nerd out and have you guys not respond, but it'll be it'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> but I liked it. I liked it a lot, and I'm hooked. And knowing that it's greenlit for a season two, I know it's something I will catch up on. What was that, Andres? I was gonna say uh, we don't respond because we don't remember that far back when we. <laughs> It's all good. Like when I saw Shug G and you guys nerded out on it two months ago or a month ago, like, and then this part, and then this, that's awesome. And then fucking nothing. Like Luis two days later, like. (laughs) (laughs) It's a heart. That's right. Uh, He's he's got my. That's that's the thing is that he, when he gives it a heart, that means he really does enjoy it. If he gives you the eggplant emoji, that's he's just telling us to fuck off. Yeah, he loves it. No way. Eggplant is like double heart. That's like. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I get excited when I get Luis's eggplant emojis. Yeah. <laughs> I give that's those away sparingly. Level. That's a whole <laughs> other level of like. Yeah, that's that's a whole other level of friendship. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of Luis, Luis, did you ever see the recommendation I post to you about over a month ago? What's that? Read comments. I would love to read comments. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not. Because uh, um, I suck. Um, I really have, I really have been in my own world uh, ever since I come back from vacation, and I, <laughs> this is probably the first week where I'm starting to get back into my groove and mm-hmm. getting back to normal and uh, such a f- first world problem. So I'm not going to complain, but no, sir, I haven't. Uh, but I'm just giving you a hard time. I know you did it. 
<laughs> no, I know you suck. Moving on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's still on my to-watch list. Uh, I wrote it down. The Prophet? Prophecy. Prophecy. No. Whose idea was this again? Hmm. <laughs> the Prophecy with Christopher Walken? Yes. No, the prophecy wasn't my you idea. I've seen the prophecy. It was my idea. <laughs> I came up with the script. No, um, I'm <laughs> the whole recommendations of things. But I only liked it when it was like to my benefit. And I was forcing you guys to watch shit I wanted to see. Oh, uh, then all of a sudden, when you had to actually do work, you're like, fuck this. I know. No, that's bullshit because I saw, uh, I mean, th- this was like extra credit, but I saw all those Halloween recommendations. For those of you listening that want to see some scary shit, Check out the Halloween recommendations we have on our pages. Uh, hey, some very disturbing probably... shit. What happened, Andres? Next year, when he has Halloween, I should do Christmas movies. No. You, you still can't? Oh, this is too hallmarky. Never mind, I'm out. <laughs> you were never nominated. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, Andres has a, a, very, uh, uh, a very interesting selection of film. I'm curious to see what he comes up with next year. You should see his Pornhub recommendations. hi <laughs> Wow. I'm coming now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's sad that I have to say I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know. I know it is sad that you have to say that you're kidding. <laughs> uh, going back to the recommendation that Andres gave to me, he recommended Rome. Um, saw <laughs> the first two episodes of Rome, and I'm fucking hooked. It's a really, really good show. Um, it was, it's reminded me very much of Gladiator, you know, the movie Gladiator, um, a little bit of Game of Thrones ish, you know, uh, so I really, really dug it. So needless to say, that's, that's one that's, it's in the queue and I'm going to continue watching it. It's only two seasons. Uh, I think it's like eight or 10 episodes each season. So, so I, I'm going to end up, you know, probably knocking that out and, and hoping for something else soon. Uh, what's up, Ash? Where can we find it? On uh, HBO. So it was before Game of Thrones, and yeah. it only two seasons because both sets and everything was really expensive for HBO to carry on. This was before they went like super massive with Game of Thrones and everything, so they pulled the plug on it. But you, so at the end, you kind of could see that it gets rushed, but it's not bad, and it it wraps up. But I would have loved to spend more time in that uh, in that universe. And I had a hard time just giving it to Esteban because I was like, oh, uh, oh, I think Ash would like this because of this. And I think Luke because of this. And I was like, did I recommend it to him recently? And I was like, oh, this is definitely up Carmen's alley. But I was like, uh, I was like, I didn't want to seem to like I favor Carmen. So I was like, oh, you know what? This is, this is fun. So I think you guys would all enjoy it for certain reasons. And it's a short watch and it's very good. So and all the rest of you to watch it too. Yeah. It's an hour. Um, yeah, it's it's about an hour, 45 hour. minutes an hour. 45 minutes about an hour. So it's 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 really good. Uh, I dug it. Um as far as my recommendation to go ahead and give, uh not gonna lie i don't have one <laughs> for this episode <laughs> I, I was envisioning you to be like luis prophecy two why would i do that you don't you don't watch the stuff that i ask you to watch anyway uh, <laughs> take it out the dagger uh, nothing else yeah i've heard you say that before <laughs> um <laughs> slowly uh, slowly the one, the one thing that I will recommend to everyone that has watched it, though, so this is an open recommendation to everyone on the show and everybody that's listening. Lame. Okay. Um, uh, if you guys have seen Dexter, you have to watch Dexter New Blood. I am on the fourth episode, halfway through the fourth episode. Uh, it is fucking good. The first episode, when I watched the first episode, I'm like, oh, God, they changed it and I wasn't following it. But at the end fucking a like i am so excited for that for that show very very excited for that show 100 percent. yes yeah message me when you finish episodes i need somebody to talk to uh is deb back or is that all in her mind and that's her dad 
point. That's that's the new Harrison. Yeah. That's is. yeah. That's the new. Yeah, it's all in his head. Whack. Yeah. Which is interesting when they have the dialogue, like, cause he's a lot more brutal to himself. Like she yes. talks a lot of shit to him of like, you're, oh, yeah. shit, you're this and that, but like yeah. she curses less, but just like, it's like, Oh crap. Like you, this is your brain telling you this stuff. Like, yeah. Dude, it's fucking deep. It's so good. It's it so really good. is. It really although, is. Although did you hear that? This is, the, this isn't a new, it's not going to continue. This uh-huh. is the, the true season uh, series finale. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. It's, it's- yeah, this is because not a lot of people like uh, what was it, uh, season eight, eight or nine or yeah. some, some show. Like that. And so yeah. this one is takes place ten years after the ending of the original, uh, which it has been ten years and it's ten years after. And mm-hmm. it's like, all right, this this is the, and so there's no open end. They're saying it from the get go. Do you feel like uh, he should have got his? quote comeuppance and people weren't happy because he lived happily not happily ever after but no because people didn't and i haven't seen a, a episode of dexter but i know how it ends oh. like much like um people that have never seen sons of anarchy knows how it ends because of yeah all this traffic social media traffic um, it's yeah. like that this uh, Dexter was, it's the opposite of what happened with Game of Thrones, where Game of Thrones, they ended it too quickly, and it was like this big story. Uh, Dexter was, it was this big story, and it was supposed to end, but because it was so successful, they Showtime was like, yeah, let's drag it on. And so it, it, lo- it started to lose its charm. And so then the final season was like, oh, let's give everybody everything they wanted. And so yeah. all these things start happening, but it felt so rushed and it didn't, it didn't fit. It didn't, things, mm-hmm. characters weren't reacting the way we've understood the characters to react to things. Mm-hmm. And so when the ending happened, it felt unfulfilling because there's this charming character that we've fallen in love with over the last eight seasons. And you're just gonna, not only is he going to turn his back on his family, the only thing he cared about next, you know, to the same level as Vin Diesel you're also going to just isolate him and you're going to leave it in such an open story of yeah this is his life now he's just miserable and so i made peace with it when it happened because it's like someone that's that deranged yeah he's not going to have a happy ending similar to batman batman's not destined for a happy ending he's he's an obsessive personality he's he obsesses over his city and that's why he grows up to be old and alone because he just has to be this person, this weapon, this brute, whatever. So I kind of made peace with it, but I wasn't, I was one of the many that didn't particularly like it. And so this to see where he is now and certain new things are being thrown in things of his past. So it's, it's done in a traditional fashion. And I keep comparing this, but to like the way force awakens is, is like, here's some things from the original, but here's new things. Right. And it's like this nice, smooth transition. So, yeah. I The one thing I will say is that I, what I do like is, you know, the original De- Dexter intro. Yeah. Um, okay. I like that they didn't duplicate it to the current atmosphere that he's in right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I see that. I, I was, like, I kind of miss it, but I see what you're saying. Yeah, you know, like by the because after watching the first episode, I'm kind of like, okay, it's the first episode. And then when the first episode ended, I'm like, okay, all right, now, now I'm we're back, you know. It's he's human, like he's making yeah. mistakes, and it's like, oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. So so it's it's really, really good. So that's that's an open invitation to everyone that has seen Dexter or hasn't seen Dexter. Uh, to pick up or watch Dexter New Blood. It's on Showtime right now. Um, so if you guys have it, check it out. Um, or the, if we were to start doing gore level, one to 10, what's the gore level? Uh, for the new season or the series of overall? overall? Like if, if I start day one. It's like, it's, it's not bad. It's six. Six, six I, out of 10? No, I wouldn't not bad to us who could handle it but he's like purposely asking about gore but it's i mean there's a lot of blood but there's not like gore gore mm-hmm. you're not seeing it's like ligaments being cut. Gore, right that what it's not people eating their own brain gore right no 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 there, there's a lot of things that are insinuated 
uh, while you're watching it, you know, and like um, blood will splat on his face and shit. While he's doing yeah, stuff. like stuff like that, you know. Uh, there is, I mean, he's a, in the original series, he's a uh, blood splatter analyst. So he deals a lot with blood. So, you know, you're going to see the crime scenes where there's blood everywhere and shit like that. It's it's um, like a cranked up CSI. You'll see like the okay. tape. Yeah, the that's a good scene, one. That's, that's a good way. And you see like realistic body parts as opposed to like an, a, clearly an actor just laying there. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll start it. Yeah. I think it's on. Netflix. It's not everything. It used so, to be the original the OG, Dexter. Yeah. I don't know yeah. if it still is. I think it's on Netflix sure. though. We'll, we'll we'll find out. Yeah. So um it's HBO Max, so it should be there. Yeah. No, it's not on HBO Max, it's on Showtime. Showtime, my bad. Yeah, yeah. so STBS stuff. Uh, Hulu? Hulu? Yes. Hulu. Yeah. Hulu. Um, no, but CBS has their own their own streaming. Yeah, service. no, it Paramount got plus. it got pulled. Uh, it's only on Showtime right now. Oh, is yep. it? Okay, oh, it'll okay. be on Hulu if you have the Showtime add-on thing. Got it. Okay, you'll probably get a cut. They they usually have like a couple episodes free. If you yeah. want to like just kind of get like dip your toe into it, see if you dig it. Yeah, I'm gonna dip my toe deep in it. No. Yeah. yeah. No. Luis, <laughs> let, let's kick off with comments. Yeah. yeah, um, you should have said, Luis, kick it one time, boy. Like, that's how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on. Uh, this is the part of the show where uh, we like to highlight you guys. Uh, this is we go over the comments of what you guys are saying to us, read it on the show, and is your opportunity to be a part of the show. So, we appreciate any type of interaction. And here we go. This is on episode 58. Uh, we got Zach. Hey there, it's Zach. Hello, Zach. Another episode in the books again. Ash, you're killing it with these edits. Great job. Just wanted to wish the group a very happy Thanksgiving. I hope you all have a mighty feast. Enjoy time with your family and friends. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you for inviting me to come hang out with comics. Fortunately, I can't I can't attend. My si- I have some things to do with my sister and Flagstaff. But I am super thankful for this podcast and all the time and effort you put into each episode. On a side note, I would like to personally wish a very happy belated birthday to Luis, that's me, and a very happy early birthday to Esteban, that's him. That's me. Did you know that? Check you later. And it says, he put it in parentheses according to Facebook. Check you later. Peace. Oh, according to Facebook. I got it. Okay. (laughs) Oh, according to Facebook. (laughs) Fucking stalker. Love you, Zach. (laughs) And perfect. Thank you, Zach. Uh, We appreciate the love, sir. Uh, You've always been You've always been, you've always been a real one. Oh, by the way, yes. Heavyweight concedes and says that Zach is the number one fan. It's funny you say that. Guess who I have next? Heavyweight. Heavyweight. Uh, alrighty, heavyweight. So we got, uh, we got two comments from heavyweight. Both of them. These are from episode fifty nine. Uh, starting with, I really enjoy watching you guys' chemistry grow with one another. You guys truly have something special. Keep it going. As Hand of the King, Zach, I will help him keep his rightful place as Commander-in-Chief of the Comics Army. All kneel before Zach. Oh. Yeah, that was really great. Heavyweight. That was, that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. That was really beautifully said. Heavyweight. Hand you, of the King. You are the shit. Uh, we appreciate your your support as well as Zach's support. Um, and that concludes our comments to everybody else listening. Uh, uh, please comment, subscribe, share, uh, listen to us talk nonsense. Um, every comment, like, and subscribe or share, it costs nothing to you, means everything to us. We really do appreciate all the support you guys have given to us. Uh, we've already passed the year marker, uh, 60 episodes in the books, and we'll keep it coming. Just give us recommendations of all oh. Things you want to hear, things you don't particularly like, give us feedback and we will continue to grow. Also, with as he said that, um, we do appreciate the comments. We do appreciate everything. And there's also uh, gear that might be coming out soon. So I know I would buy the people that comment regularly their shirt. But New incentives. Uh, we're working on that. Oh, we got merch coming. We got merch coming. We got merch coming. So, Speaking of, 
I know, I know who I know, uh, you know, regulars don't just say one comment. Where's my shirt? Like, yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> I, want free sh- I want free shit. Especially because of our housekeeping. We heard that we have four new subscribers. So please, please comment. Sorry. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, Sarah, go ahead. No, no, you're good. You're good. Uh, speaking of uh new followers uh if you guys aren't aware and i know this is going to be coming out after the fact but it's all good because if you guys are there you guys might see us there la comic-con is going to be this weekend it's going to be uh december 3rd 4th and 5th uh comics is going to be there um ash and myself are going to be there uh, by the time that comes around. out they would have already known no I, that, that that's why i said what i said um so We'll be out there. Uh, if you guys see us, cool. Uh, we are going to be walking around talking to some um, some cosplayers. Uh, I actually was able to uh, set up an interview with the Los Angeles Ghostbusters. So stay tuned. We're going to be talking to uh, the Los Angeles Ghostbusters uh, at LA Comic Con. What? Yes, sir. I want to get their I want to get their take on what they do and stuff like that, and if and uh, their most recent ghost that they've busted. So. And if we can go on one of their, oh, that'd be dope. We'll talk about it. You're not gonna go. You're scared. I will go. That's the thing is, I watch true crime stuff. I could deal with real stuff. Uh, it's I don't know why I can't do. I can't. I don't know. I, I don't know. But we'll deal. With, we'll talk about it. He's like, I've always wanted a roommate. I'll just throw a seven in front of everything. <laughs> we'll be good. Yeah, yeah, of course. Typical. <laughs> typical Ash. So this being episode 60, this is uh, my show this week. And since we have started the holiday season, we are in December. I'm going to be throwing you guys uh, a little bit of Christmas trivia, uh, Christmas movie trivia. So our first, no, no, no one wants it. No, not even a little bit. Come on, I want just, it. Just, give yeah, it. you do. Give it to Hopefully me. Hopefully about Christmas movies. No. Every, everyone except Andres. Andres doesn't want it. <laughs> But did you know in uh, the movie Elf, the shower scene actually wasn't written in the, in the original script, uh, but ultimately added after director John Favreau found out that Zoe Deschanel was a good singer. Isn't she uh, her? What? She. She. She's she, right? She is she from She and Him. Yes. Yeah. You are correct. Uh, in an interview, Favreau said that he wrote it into the script because Zoe's voice reminded him uh, of Doris Day. Uh, he said it was old timey and gave gave the film a magical feeling. So there is. John Favreau was the director of Elf. John Favreau, yes, you didn't know that. I've never stayed that long. I saw the movie. I see the movie a million times, but I never st- stayed for the director part of that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, it's in the opening credits, dude. I stay for what I watch. I don't. You know what I mean. It's not like Marvel or like, hey, that's the key grip. The key grip, that's the key grip from that. Like, it's Elf. I'm not paying attention to that shit. Okay. But John Favreau, he's amazing. Sorry. Uh, 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 Andres, what were you saying? Oh, I was going to say, uh, not only does Zoe Deschanel sing incredibly well, and she has a crazy voice. Um, also, her sister in, what was the name of that goddamn show that she was on on Fox? Bones. with uh, Maria Honest. Huh? Bones. Bones, yeah, there's an episode. That's your sister? Yes. I see it. You could only tell. Anyways, but she also, Zoe. I didn't know. Uh, but there's an episode where she sings, uh, and uh, older sister Emily sings really well, too. So they are a talented family. They really are. Super huh. talented. Never knew. Just straight up oof. And it's, oh, you beat me to it. God damn it. What's that? Super eggplant. Super. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're only supposed to do that in chats. <laughs> uh, all right. So jumping into the show, uh, there were some news today that Nicolas Cage is coming back to is uh, going to go ahead and play Dracula in an upcoming Universal movie uh, called Renfield. Um, how do you guys feel about Nick Cage uh, playing Dracula. The dude's a good actor. Um, he's gotten a lot of... He's taken a lot of bad roles. I heard Pig was good. It's been on my radar to watch. I haven't seen mm-hmm. it yet. But I think it's on Hulu. It is? Yeah, I think so. I think it's on Hulu. 
I ought to be watching it. I've been I've been wanting to see it for a while because I it got such a positive buzz. But uh, good actor that has uh, just kind of started spiraling down. But I don't, know, I don't hate the dude. I'm willing to see what he brings to it. All right. Andres, how do you feel about uh, him playing Dracula? Ash, go for it. Once it's been Gary Oldman, I, I'm I'm good. But if it's gonna be if it's gonna be Renfield and it's like it's like if you do uh oh, they did do that. I haven't seen an episode of it, but if you did Alfred mm-hmm. and Bruce is like, this is everything. Alfred does while Bruce is out mm-hmm. like cool and maybe he's just in a couple of whatever I will say this Con Air is a guilty pleasure just like fucking Armageddon um, on the level of Armageddon but that's John Cusack um, I, there's a thing on YouTube I know I go everywhere with this there's a thing on YouTube where it's like a uh, uh, John Favreau breaks down his most iconic roles. Blah, 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 breaks down his... And Nicolas Cage broke down characters where it's like... Um, he's a franchise guy. You know what I mean? Like, he's a... Like, we're going to give him this movie and it's the next action hero, like Mia Neeson and Taken 64, like... You know what I mean? Like, it's just, he's a franchise guy. And he's a, what somebody, it's about everybody else, but everybody's going to go see the movie because it's a Nicolas Cage movie. But it's really, everybody else gets to be a character. But he breaks down these characters in that, like, I don't know, I have I have a newfound respect for him in that, like, he talks about the characters that as if they're real people, which that's, I appreciate. It's not like a like a, a Channing Tatum where it's like, hey, I just wanted to be funny in this movie. Hey, I just wanted to blah, blah, blah. You know, there's a safe acting and then there's a safe whatever. But like, and that, that's no disrespect to Channing Tatum. But I'm just saying like, um, there's actors that have taken classes and fucking respect acting and that it is a craft. And that... Uh, on YouTube was the first thing that made me respect Nicolas Cage as an actor. But as Louis said, there's, I mean, fucking Bruce Willis has 97 straight to DVD movies I've never heard of, but I'm still down for Die Hard. You know what I mean? Like, cool, bro. Pulp Fiction. But there he's, you know, that's the way I feel about Nicolas Cage. Like, you have a million movies on HBO Max, Hulu that are like, hey, come see this movie. And he looks all tore up. <laughs> I'm not going to see, but it is what it is. I, I Hopefully it's about Renfield, who, and he's like a secondary character where maybe he can shine and you can show the best part of Nicolas Cage acting. Again, fucking Face, face Off is one of my favorite movies. Not the greatest acting, but it's one of my favorite movies. You just, if you're there to sit down and fucking watch Fucking just uh, I everyone with this shit. Um, he's a popcorn person for me. Just enjoy the movie. You're not gonna leave there going fucking. It's Game of Thrones level, but seasons one through three. But you're gonna you're gonna at least be like cool. <laughs> Good specification. <laughs> so your favorite your favorite Nick Cage movie is Face Off. I could have sworn I I would have thought you would have gone with Gone with Sixty Seconds. Let's go. No, Memphis is not my favorite. Um, oh, but Garrett, Giovanni Ribisi, great acting. Fucking uh, Angelina Jolie. That's what I'm saying. Give Luis the movie. No, like, give somebody the movie and then everybody else will shine, but we're all going to go for you. Does that make sense? Like, like, we all went for, nobody knew like we knew 006 was in the movie or in Game of Thrones, and then all of a sudden everybody else shined and everybody whatever. And then it became way less. Even though at the end of Game of Thrones, I was like, oh, they killed off the main character. 
but they kind of really didn't. But that was the main, that's the most famous guy yeah. uh, in the show. Do you know what I mean? Okay. We, we went there for him and then all of a sudden fucking everybody blew up. Momoa, everybody. Momoa was doing like B-movies until that, that show. And then all right. of a sudden he's fucking Aquaman and he's this and now he's like top tier like Let's get Momo on the movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. What about you, Andres? How do you feel about Nick Cage playing Dracula? Well, thank you for reminding me what we're talking about because that was really long. Uh, um, uh, as I have a look at what uh, Luis and Ash said. Um, so, yes, Nick Cage may not have. Um, and he does have a ton of shit that's like straight to DVD and bad and he's just taking movies uh, but I do want to see Pig like Luis said I have heard that it is good and he does have a good uh, performance in it and when Ash said it's like oh he's a good actor I was like no but yes because I love him in Adaptation that is like an incredible movie and if no one's seen Adaptation, you should fucking go watch that movie because it is really great. And he does more than one character in that movie. And it is like touching and heartbreaking. And like if that's like that's him at his peak, if you ask me, like there isn't a better performance by him in anything else. So he'll always have my because sure? you've seen the movie The Rock. Yeah, I saw the. <laughs> Just kidding, sorry. The Rock, uh, but yes, uh, and I saw a face off at the theaters too. So, but also Wicker Man was goddamn horrible. But anyway, um, yeah. So, is that the one where he's a fucking uh, with the yeah. uh, uh, weather guy? No, that's Weatherman, right? That's Weatherman. Yeah, Weatherman. <laughs> I actually He's the weather thing. That's weatherman. Oh my bad. I don't hate weatherman. What weatherman is? Uh, but no. Um, is he in a attraction to it? Maybe ten years ago. Uh, but I'll probably watch it at home. But I'll watch. Think, I will watch it. Yeah. Do you think that this is Universal's second or third? I think it's it, their third attempt to reboot the old monster movies yeah Andres. so yes it's their i it's their ip they have the character should try but i think the last thing that failed was like you put the word out before you grab people's attention where it's like yeah we're doing a universe it's the fucking uh, monster universe and you, we're going to do a bunch of tie-ins and do their individual stuff to introduce this. It's like, let it happen naturally. It's like, you don't have to release that information. Like people will get it with what you're doing. And if you make good movies, people will get in and you'll, you'll start a fan base and you'll have a following. And yeah. yeah. The you don't... man was good. Yeah. Um, but also, it's like, yeah, but we were already, we already knew at that point that there was going to be a universe. So it's like, I guess we're getting all these other movies ran down our throat. Just do a good movie and get us involved with it, and then we'll like it, and then do your... I wanted to like The Mummy so bad. I just could not. I could not. I tried twice. The Tom Cruise one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and see, that's the thing, is that the the... Tom Cruise and Mummy was was Universal's second attempt to kickstart this cinematic universe, this monster cin- cinematic universe. The first one was like Dracula Unleashed, right? Uh, Dracula Untold. Uh, yeah. Same. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Evan Cage? Not Evan Cage. Uh, Luke, Luke Evans. Evans. Luke Evans. Yeah, that was supposed to be it. And then I think shortly after that one was Wolfman. Uh, and then, yeah, with Benicio Del Toro. Uh, and then after that, it, it, it was over. Um, I saw Dracula Untold. It was okay. It was good. You know, it had its good parts. Uh, I thought Wolfman was fucking fantastic. You know, I thought it was great. Would I know I would. Take, but take, I, take, I, hold on. Uh, to be fair, I don't want to completely 
throw that under the under the rug. Pull pull yourself out of it. Someone that is into uh, werewolf lore, right? Was it good to the average viewer, or do you think it was just like because that's your shit that it was good for you? No, I th- I think it's good to the to the average viewer because okay. um the the one part that I thought was actually really cool that that was different was the transformation scene uh, in Wolfman. Uh, the transformation scene, transformation scene was actually really, really good. Uh, the one that's the one that was up there uh, before, at least in my opinion, uh, the trans- as far as tra- was American Werewolf in London. That transformation scene was all practical effects. So if you guys haven't seen that, just Google that shit. That shit's nuts. The way they ended up doing that, as far as practical effects. Uh, the Wolfman one, the Wolfman one was, was genius. And the way that, like the way that they, the anatomy and stuff like that, that where you see the human body transform into the wolf, I think is fantastic. Um, so it, I think, cause they wanted the Luke Evans one to carry the movie being the Iron Man of that, you know, of that universe. And then Wolfman was supposed to be like the uh captain america you know yeah. to kind of carry to kind of carry it that way so i mean where with that, that though where does that, well, is, is that are they against other bad guys and they're the good yes yeah. okay. so essentially that's what that's what it was supposed to do it was supposed to be and it sounds it like when you talk about it, it sounds kind of cheesy and stuff but it was supposed to be uh dracula yeah uh Dra- it was supposed to be they were going to reboot dracula uh wolfman um the Invisible Man, Creature from the Black Lagoon, uh, Frankenstein, uh, Bride of Frankenstein, and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I would so love like, Creature Black Lagoon. Love to see that. Like, yeah. They should still do yeah. it. And they, right. who, they would, who would play Frankenstein? Who That's going to Frankenstein? Who would want to not have a speaking part? And- LeBron. LeBron, oh God. He already started his acting career in Space Jam. So, he's a big okay. dude. What do you mean? He's a big dude. He's a towering creature. Like, yeah. Towering creature now. Yeah, yeah. Just, just some makeup on him. Um, Shaq. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't have to be anybody, like, actually tall. They would just end up putting those platform boots on him. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. So, um... Honestly, but I don't know see, who I would... If you were going to go Iron Man level, then you do the Creature from the Black Lagoon, and then you do little hints, nothing, like, like even the Hulk. The Hulk had nothing to do with anything, and then all of a sudden, the, the snow breaks. Hey, there's no, uh, there's fucking Captain America's shield. That's all you need. Everybody needs to stand yeah. on their own, and then just little nothing, because I don't know what to look for. Like, even... The fucking, uh, as they're making Dracula, a bat flies, and that's all you fucking get. Like, nothing. Just little mm-hmm. nothings. Sorry. No, no, no. And, and and yeah, it's, the way that they were trying to do it was, you know, it, it, it just didn't work out. And then when they tried to redo it again, it kicked off with Tom Cruise's mummy. And then uh, Russell Crowe, who actually cameoed in The Mummy, was supposed to be uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Yeah. Yeah. I remember uh, that. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, The Invisible Man, the one that came out with uh, Elizabeth Moss, that was another one, you know. That movie was fucking good. I would have never pieced them all together. That's crazy. Yeah, that, but then, wait, uh, now that I think about it, uh, I forget his name, but there was a Frankenstein movie. It was I Frankenstein. Um, yeah, with uh, Aaron Eckhart. That one, I didn't see it, but he's like think- fighting bad guys and shit. That yeah. you know, what happened, Andres? Say, say it again. I would. I don't think it was meant to be in the new Universal Monster Universe. Oh, that was like before, right before. I took it. I took it more as like in the underworld uh, world. Uh, oh, I see. Vision, like the. The cinematics were very much mm-hmm. in that era or in that realm. Right on. Yeah, it, it's with that because I don't know. I don't remember who was supposed to be like the big bad when all the because essentially it was they were supposed to have their own separate movies and then they were going to have a team up movie. So all the, 
And then uh, Sean Connery comes back for his acting debut in uh, The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Part two. <laughs> Part deuce. Yeah. So and, It's like Ace, but twice as cool. Yeah. And, and that's the thing is that I don't know who was supposed to be the, the big bad. It was either going to be Dracula or it was going to be Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Um, that was supposed to be the big bad for, for the team-up movie. So... It, I think if this is their, if this is Universal's third attempt to reboot the entire um, monster movie franchise and bring forth the their the universe, the monster movie universe, I think that I mean I think starting it off with Renfield would actually be is a pretty good idea. So that's that's just. It would be an awesome spoof. Is they all come together to fight the fucking studio. <laughs> <laughs> the like writers' Avengers. room. There's yeah. fucking people. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the best Dracula spoof that I saw was Dracula Dead and Loving It. Oh my God! Yes. No, not Lee yeah. Lee. Uh, Leslie Nielsen. Leslie, Leslie, Leslie Nielsen. Nielsen. Yeah. Nielsen. Yeah. Right. I thought I thought that one was pretty cool. Um. So moving on to oh, our geez. next. Sorry. What? You'll see when you watch the show. You'll see. Oh. Um. Uh, moving on to our next piece of trivia. Did you know that in Home Alone, the prop department originally created a fake tarantula to put on Daniel Stern's face, but the director made them use a real one, okay? Uh, and uh, also it says, uh, there's a rumor that Daniel Stern mined his screen during the scene, but actually that's not true. Uh, while prepping for the scene, uh, the animal trainer on set said, just don't make any sudden threatening moves and you'll be fine. Uh, Daniel responded, but I'm going to be screaming in the tarantula's face. Do you think he'll feel threatened by it? The animal trainer simply said, tarantulas don't have ears. He can't hear, they can't hear, so relax. So it was an actual tarantula they put on Daniel Stern's face. Fuck all of that. That's pretty funny, though. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, and another one in Die Hard... Uh, there's a scene in Die Hard where he's jumping for cover. You can actually see him uh, because he is, because the, his, the main character, John McClane's walking uh, pretty much barefoot for the majority of the movie and walking on glass. He actually, they actually put, uh, the prop department actually made rubber feet for him to wear. So there's, a, there's an actual scene uh, on there where you see him jumping and you can see the two-toned skin tone of his actual like calf and the prop rubber foot that he's wearing so so there's that so if you guys can spot that you guys can spot that also another actor that wore rubber feet in the movie was chris evans in captain america when he was running barefoot in uh when he was chasing the the hydra agent on the street ah quick question yeah to the group starting with the S. Die Hard Christmas movie? Yes. Sorry, <laughs> what I said, said goddamn. Christmas movie you go to, but it's definitely set during. I feel the same way about fucking Batman Returns. It's Christmas movie. You're fucking uh, ridiculous. Legitimately a Christmas movie? Probably not, but yes, because it was filmed at that time. It's like I'm weird whenever, uh, personally, uh, I, I'm weird because whenever, like, Christmas season comes along. Uh, I get the itch to watch uh, Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter, uh, which both aren't Christmas. I don't know what it is. Were they the released during Christmas? Is that why? Like, I mean, it's a sensory thing. Lord of the Rings was released around Christmas. Yeah, I would say it probably was because I know the like. I know Harry Potter's were right because that, that was the big. Yeah, mm, I think, I think they so. Were summer, towards, the end, they? towards the end of the movie, or end of the movies, end of the end of the year. I would imagine, and it's always like snowy and shit. Like, yeah. so, so yeah. So those aren't, I would say, Christmas movies. But yeah, every time this time of the year comes up, I need to get into them. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Well, well, see, well that makes what sense. Are, what are our I, Christmas movies? I I aggressively disagree with the the Die Hard thing. Ash, I already heard you. That's so one. Die Hard, uh, Christmas movie. Traditional Christmas movie? No. Uh, is it is it a movie that was that took place around Christmas? Yes. 
Oh, what's yeah, the that's, ending song? That's not the, the that's not that's not the question. What is though, the because... ending song during the credits? The weather outside is bright, right? It's a fucking Christmas movie. No, it is not. It is. It was a Christmas party, but it's not okay, like no. A Christ- the ending credits aren't the Christmas song. It might, be, it might. No, it might be, but it's okay. not a Christmas movie. Is something with Christmas morals. Like it's there not are white uh, Christmas where everything's fucking. Well, there's like there, my argument is always like there's a shit ton of scary films. Not every scary film is a Halloween movie. In order to be a Halloween movie, it has to be set around Halloween, like Trick or Treat. Trick or Treat is a Halloween movie. Trick or Treat. Because it's it's about the whole theme of the film is Halloween, not just because oh this is scary. Oh, the Saw movie. Saw is my favorite Halloween film. Like, I understand where you make that connection because mm-hmm. it's a scary thing, but it's not a traditional Halloween film. So I always find it interesting that, like, there's people that go to bat for, you know. Oh, yeah, that's that's a hill that a lot of people will die on. Is, yeah. is that? Is that? And what's what's yeah. funny is my argument, my counter argument is typically, well, if that's a Christmas movie, so is Batman Returns. But Ash came out the gate with that, so I had no, I had no yeah. report. <laughs> uh, Andres, what's up, Andres? Is a Nightmare Before Christmas a Halloween movie or a Christmas movie? That's a fucking hard one. It is. It is both. It is more a Christmas movie than a Halloween movie because it it's is more about... a Halloween movie than it is a Christmas movie. Ooh, they I only disagree. kidnap fucking Santa Claus, but it's this is Halloween. It's t- it's in the fucking credit, not in the credits. It's in the fucking beginning of the movie. In the in the first chunk of it, but he's sick of Halloween. He wants to transition to something better in his eyes. Okay, and then but, it turns into Christmas, and then he goes back to, and then I realize my mistake, and he lives in Halloween Town. It's both, but I feel it's more a Christmas film. But it's it's appropriate for both. Okay, okay, it's so for both. but you don't feel. Why do you want to fight? I'm agreeing with you. I know, right? Right. The entire Christmas. And okay, it's song. appropriate for both, but you also suck dick. I'm like, okay, dude. Like, ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's your reference. Uh, you, fit in, you fit in your suck a, suck a dick every episode. <laughs> okay, fine, I'll do it. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. Wait, your beard you're... tickles. <laughs> what are you saying? Back to you, so. Uh, <laughs> so you're saying you're saying that. In order for it to constitute as a Halloween movie, it has to take place around Halloween or on Halloween. It has to have Halloween themes. So it doesn't even have to be on or around. It's it's if, if I'm not, it's okay, okay, theme. okay, okay. You're saying Halloween theme. Mm-hmm. By that definition, Die Hard is a Christmas movie because it took place at a Christmas party. It took place at a party, but that's not. It doesn't have the Halloween. It, uh, it doesn't have the Christmas theme. Christmas party. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you don't see it as a dad that is trying to win back his family, flying from New York to Los Angeles to go ahead and be with his wife and kids, trying to fix his marriage so that they're all a family. That's not. Christmas morals to you? It wasn't until you presented it the way you presented it. That is a very compelling argument. I'm not going to say that it's not. Uh, Whose daughter becomes as hot as Mary Elizabeth Winstead. This is true. Very so compelling then, argument. So I'm not, again, this is not the hill I'm dying on. No, I know. No, no, I I know. Although I am, not, I am not so stubborn to say that I'm not listening to reason. Everything you just mentioned that sounds pretty uh, fucking Christmas to me. You like, don't put it on during Christmas, like <laughs> Elf. Elf people put on during, or you'll shoot your eye out, kid, or you know what I mean, like Home Alone. I get it. Home Alone I get all it. day. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's Home Alone Christmas mm, bus. We're, we're one and two. It. One and two. Uh, it's one and two. Yeah. One, one and two. but two has like fucking uh, New York, man. I can. It's a continuation of the same movie. Yeah, I so that. good. Like I don't. I like part one, and then I have to do part two during Christmas Day. It's all or both in Christmas Day, but yeah. like the crow is my 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 Halloween movie for storyline reasons. But mm-hmm. uh my Christmas movie is is Halloween. Oh, excuse me, <laughs> is uh Home Alone, and then I gotta see Home Alone too. Because it it's just as quotable as part one. Right. Just as quotable. Just they didn't change the fucking thing. These three, four, five, six, and this other new bullshit, like, don't change the shit. Like, don't, don't change my shit. I'm going into that. 
But you know what I mean? Like, it's it's not. There's a really great sketch. Same formula that you're trying to make for somebody else. The greatest thing that Joe Pesci did was like, I'm gonna fuck your. F-. You know he's saying you motherfucking little bitch. Like you know yeah. he's saying that, <laughs> but he's saying it like he's just as he's just as pissed as fucking Goodfellas. Yeah, but he is there because he's a great actor, and this is PG. This is whatever. Right. I don't know no snakes. People are getting shot. Like <laughs> it's it's one of those kid movies that's that everybody can enjoy, and and these other ones are like little sucking like little fucking. Oh no! I fell. Like like these motherfuckers were nearly dying, getting hit in the face with paint cans, getting hit in the face with fucking uh uh. Uh, piping what but you know what I mean like these people could die it was like it was like uh like three stooges a saw running around your head and then you look at the blades they're all broken like you're not treating a kid like a kid you're treating them like kids want to be adults but you're catering to them but also these motherfuckers I laughed so hard I almost passed out when uh Marv when Marv stepped on the nail and then fucking fell backwards, that entire, like, it was like a comedic <laughs> scream that, like, and he fell back on his back. Imagine your mother stepping on a nail. Like, you'd be like, oh, my God. Like, it, they made it so comedic that it mm-hmm. it blew away everything. And then they That made you laugh the like, hardest? Yeah. Huh? The, the or- them, uh, Marv stepping on the ornaments in one. Yeah. That yeah, fucking part two killed had just as made. Harry, I reached the top. Wham! Like <laughs> that motherfucker hit cement with his face and made that <laughs> one a different that premise. Cracked his neck. Yeah. Yeah. Or God, fucking so good. my uh, the the only thing I will never get on top of that that's not around when he fucking touches the sink in part two and he turns into a skeleton. That's when you went, oh okay. Like oh, oh that took you out of it. It did because you you, it was like that's my line. The curtain. It was too behind the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess it was too <laughs> Wizard of Oz. Got it. Okay. Yeah. It was too, like oh now we're kids, but I still people got fucked up and it played on top of it. One, two, that's it. He's got the, he's got nothing left. Bink. Like it played on top of, uh, on top of the gags of the first one. Sorry. Yeah. That's those are my those are my that's my Christmas movie. Dude, so, so absolutely. Okay, so so would you constitute movie. Iron Man three as a Christmas movie? Uh, I remember. The only thing I remember about part three is the part where he's he's looking at the stars or whatever. Hey, did you know that fucking part three was supposed to be a the enemy was supposed to be a girl or, or a yeah. woman? I'm sorry. And then they said that the toy won't sell because it's it's a woman. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's fucking horrible. Yeah, it was uh, the the main villain was supposed to be the girl that he actually hooks up with at the party. It was supposed to be her. Leslie Bibb? Yeah. Wow. But not clearly not the not Mandarin. But who was he? Who was she? Um, who was Memento? Who was that guy? Oh, um, fuck. Guy Pierce. Guy Pierce, but yeah. character-wise. Oh, uh, fucking A. I'm trying to remember his name. Sorry. Uh, but yeah. Killian. Killian? Killian. Yeah. Killian. Yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. Now, yeah, going so... by the Marvel card, I imagine the dragon. Going by the the Marvel card that I had. Right. So, you sh- hey, you're wearing pants this time. <laughs> hey. <laughs> My dick. <laughs> but yeah, we went everywhere. I'm sorry. But yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, I wouldn't because I... <laughs> Remember this much of part three. Part three just wasn't. Well, it's because you threw up before we saw the movie, so it is because of that. And and they didn't really deal with the alcoholism like the the comics did. It was kind of like he only had a drink really in Iron Man one. Like they started yeah. to imply it, but then when Disney's like, "Oh, this is gonna be a franchise," like they cut it out. Yeah. yeah, there's there's an actual deleted scene. Uh, I think it might be on Disney Plus. I'm not 100 sure, but I know for a fact that it's on the DVD 
where you know the scene where Pepper walks in and, and Jarvis is trying to take off the, the suit of armor off of him. Uh, so that's the one that made the film. The one, the deleted scene was actually him in his office with his helmet off, like with the bullet ridden Iron Man suit. And he was drunk at that point. And Pepper walks in and she goes, what happened? And I, I can't remember. I can't remember what he says, but like, he's like slurring his words and he's drunk. He was tripping. Death. He was tripping on that. He murdered people that he killed people. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. That, yeah. yeah that I, uh, I, 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 yeah, because it was like, but I that was such a humanizing scene because it was like he was remorseful, like even though he did the right thing by saving these yeah. people, but it's like I took lives, like. And yeah, they, they made that about the aliens. They made that about the aliens, right? The hole opened up. No, no, no. The, this was on the first. In one. the first one, the very, the very first one. one. When he's uh, going to like Afghanistan or whatever, like. Oh. Yeah, yeah. He go. He goes back uh, and to destroy all those Jericho missiles that were out there. Um, I'll see if I can find it on YouTube and I'll send it to you. But yeah, yeah. It, it's it's one of those on there where it, it's it's pretty deep. Like it, I don't know why they cut it out, but, see, I, but like he, and even like same. when he was on the airplane and stuff, like with uh, uh with Rody, Rody? um and he's like they're all drunk. They have like the we should, the we should screen thing. grab it and put it on IG for us. Yes, we should. We'll do I'm, that. I didn't mean to cut you off. I just if I don't say it fucking now, I'm not gonna remember. Sorry, Luis, go ahead. Uh, that would be dope right like little things yes it's it's yeah uh but it's a but it's also like all of those little nothing easter eggs that were being dropped mm-hmm. like in hulk and stuff the end credit scene in hulk didn't make sense in the end credit scene in hulk was tony stark talking to the general saying mm-hmm. that tony is making an avengers team oh he's putting the team together yeah, and then, the, but it, that was like just a fun thing for the fans. And then when it ended up like catching fire, and it's like, oh, yeah, let's reel it in. And then Iron Man two, in my opinion, I didn't think it was as good as the first one. Uh, there was still enjoyment out of it, but it was like that one was they were they were reeling it in of like, okay, this mm-hmm. is a, a story we're going to tell. Here are the new characters. And da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. But anyway, rest is history. Here we are. There we go. Ten years later. Uh, so did you guys know that George R. R. Martin actually went to the HBO showrunners and begged for a season 10? I saw this, but this is also the same dude that was taking forever to finish the book. So I, uh, it's, I'm afraid that he jumped ship when it didn't go well. Because mm-hmm. I know, I mean, Here's the sad thing. You can't rush art, right? This is his baby. This is his thing. And it's his vision. He wants it to be right. And and HBO was offering him because uh, he, he has like missing fingers and shit, but he likes to do shit old school, like on a typewriter. Mm-hmm. And they offered to send him a writer and for him to just tell the writer what to like type out. And he refused. He's like, no, 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 this is my method. This is what I want to do. And you know, all this. And so, he was like kind of delaying it, delaying it, delaying it. And the idea that, oh, I told him to go longer. It's like, I don't know. It doesn't, I don't know if it really fits with what was happening. But it I also seems, feel for the guy because that's his baby. It, it seems very much like out of desperation at this point, you know, be, only because it's like, it's been how long since Game of Thrones, end, since Game of Thrones ended? You know, and then now all of a sudden these reports are coming out saying that he begged HBO for a 10th season. Isn't it coming out because there's a book on or a, like behind the scenes documentary on HBO, and that's why they interviewed him? With, oh, probably. But then it's not because George R. R. Martin they relevant and they like why wanted more seasons. But he was at released yeah i think you're right i think there might be something coming out soon in regards to to game of thrones and, and a documentary so i mean we got what we got bo and them trying to like rise as like a me like heavy tv stuff and like behind the scenes on them acquiring shit if i do remember yeah i mean I mean, we got what we got as far as Game of Thrones goes. So, 
I guess the only <laughs> thing that we can really hope for is House of Dragon. So maybe it's better. Maybe. Ash, what were you going to say? It's don't you think it's upsetting. It's being made to feel like you're not good enough for eight seasons and then accepting you're not good enough and letting someone else be king. It's like a re-upsetting, like, oh, like I was okay with uh, the person that ends up being king because it was kind of like, if we get exactly what we want, again, as it's coming as a wrestling fan. If you know Hulk Hogan's going to win, there was a time when I was a kid where, oh, my God, Hulk Hogan's going to lose. Oh, no, he won. And now as I'm older, it's like you just you just gave us exactly what we want. Like it's mm-hmm. now I'm not now I'm not surprised. Now I'm not. Now it's like uh, shock me, but shock me in a way that I didn't know. So that I could be like, holy shit, Macho Man won. I didn't know that. Like I totally thought, you know what yeah. I mean? Like you yeah. set it up perfect, but. Like, if it was, I keep coming up with different scenarios of how it could have happened, but it was like a guy not feeling good enough and that made him your hero and then accepting he's not good enough to let somebody else take it. Where, as opposed to, he got to sit on the throne, Daenerys' fucking dragon went crazy, he goes to take off, but at least he got to sit on the throne. Sorry, Andres. Uh, I know it's it's do you get what I'm saying though like yeah sorry I don't mean to to like shit on what you were saying or anything I just meant like for me and and I know what you're saying it's like oh we shouldn't get what we wanted from the beginning of this show because then what the fuck is the point of watching it if we're just going to end up getting what we wanted anyway yeah. um but also like and it's like okay so we all wanted John to be the overall king and end up to be on top at the end and he doesn't get it and he's like he gives up the throne he's like i'm just gonna be on the wall i'll be king of the north whatever it's like then why do you think with the whole azor a high part where he's like the chosen one and he gets resurrected why do all that it doesn't make any sense so that's a whole storyline gone cut whole wasted bullshit and why did he fucking survive that yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. Like, it's almost like, it's like, bro, I'm gonna get you a PS5. I'm gonna get you a PS5, and then all of a sudden you get socks, and you're like, "Hey, socks!" <laughs> That's how I feel with that. Like, it, it, I got socks. Just be appreciative. You know, uh, but I, um, I'm not happy with Game of Thrones. Hopefully, they come back like Dexter, and then Joe, John, just fucking shanks him, like while he's in the wheelchair, just shanks him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm absolutely kidding. But so it, I, I feel like this this whole other season is to appease us, and they're gonna be kind of be better with different, different series. So that's what makes me like more hopeful that it's like it's new showrunners, it's a new cat. George R. R. Martin is involved, so it gets to expand on his universe. So it's like okay, hope and. Yeah, because I really loved Game of Thrones originally. It may not, it may not take its place right away, but maybe it's something that I'll get into and I'll really like, and eventually it'll take over. Yeah, like the bad feelings I have left at the end of Game of Thrones. So it's so but, interesting. Like, Brett did have a good arc. That that is one of those. Yeah. I, I can't think of another show that the last season was so devastating that it ruined the whole show. Like, the world was talking about Game of Thrones. Yeah. The fucking world was talking about it. But because it couldn't stick the landing on the last season, everyone just unanimously hates it. Like, and, and but the people that hate it are also the bandwagoners. The people that jumped on because the rest of the world was on it. And they're like, oh, that was lame. That was stupid. Whatever. They're easy to, like, talk shit. Well, people like us, all these years later, we still talk about it because there's still there's still love in our hearts about the things that we liked. Like right. on the, the Red Wedding, we've never seen something that horrible on television. 
you could see the difference in the show like the last two seasons though so that's where it's like and that the second to the last season you're like all right we're holding hope we're holding hope like at the like the start of the the first few episodes and it's like okay okay like you're like okay like i'm giving it time to go um for this show and it's just like all right well, i'm trying to pass that you can tell it's rushed they're getting <laughs> to where they shouldn't have got into yet and it's like oh you're fucking and like you still had hope until the very I end i defended it I was def- I was one of like the fight at the dark that you couldn't see shit and everyone was talking shit. I defended it. I was like, oh, you know, that's even scarier. They don't know what they're fighting. Like, what you're talking about you can't see anything. You could see it, and it's like, <laughs> oh, and it's like what I didn't if, get what if, Starbucks cup at the at the fucking <laughs> Daenerys' table. It happens. Like, what the fuck? Am I gonna get mad oh, yeah. because then you give me that finale? The fucking oh, yeah. guy. Want to be the king of the north ends up being the king of everything. I was like, oh, I changed my mind. I'm not the fucking three eye raven anymore. Fuck you. How the fuck does that make sense to anyone? This fucking bitch doesn't do shit. The whole show doesn't want shit. And all of a sudden, yeah, I'm in charge. Fuck it. Fuck. You. No. Sorry. You know what if I Aria Aria was like the the hands, especially with the arc she like. Becoming faceless, bro. The <laughs> that'd be the, dope, I, right? Oh, no, I, I, with anything, I'm out of here. I'm gonna go travel the furthest. <laughs> fucking main the whole show. It's like I'm out of here. Bye. Her fucking arc pissed me off. It really did because in the book, her arc is so much better than that. Like fucking so much better than that. It, it, and then there's so many things that were that were in the book that didn't come out in the show. Yeah. Oh, just the mere fact of you know the whispers that Lady Stoneheart was going to su- supposedly appear. Oh my god, that would have been fucking amazing. Isn't there a thing where the mom was a ghost or something that wasn't not a thing? That's right? it's a resurrected like. Okay. Yeah, Lady Stoneheart. Yeah. Oh, that's what you said. I'm sorry. See, I don't. I've never read the book, so but uh, same. Yeah. So yeah. If you, if cool. you Google if you Google images of Lady Stoneheart, like she looks fucking gruesome, dude. It, it it's dope though. Like I would have loved to seen that. So there was a. I I feel like that was brought up though. Like there was a. Oh, this is the episode that she might show up, right? There was a lot of speculation. There, yeah, there was yeah. a lot of speculation and stuff. But what were you gonna say, Andres? So it's the member of the uh, Dondarian and Thoros of Mir, their their group, the Brothers Without Borders. Is that what it brothers is? Brothers Without Banners or something like that. So they're the ones that come across Catelyn Stark after her body was like thrown into the river. Yeah, that's it. She her body river. That's the actress, huh? Yeah. yeah. Her, is that like? Is that sorry? Is no, that no, that's that's Photoshop. Photoshop. Like, that's all Photoshop. Okay. Yeah, it's just uh, an idea. Sorry. Body and resurrector, similar to to uh, Beric Dondarrion, mm-hmm. like that warrior keeps coming back to life, and he like loses pieces of himself. So that's basically what happens to Catelyn Stark, and she's in charge of that little army, and she's hunting down all the people that are involved in the Red Wedding. So that's what we're left off in the book. Oh, so. that would have been dope. Yeah. yeah. Ah, that would have been dope. Too bad it wasn't. There wasn't like a. This is the Game of Thrones series, but little, like little one season, two season things that could have sprouted from it. Because that would have been good. fucking dope. That's a good thing about Marvel. It's like uh, we don't have anything for you, but here's Ant Man. Uh, we don't have anything for you, but here's Hawkeye. Like, like they they know where they're going and they all connect. But they like. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, what were you saying, Andres? Uh, the mic didn't pick up what you were saying. I was going to say that that's, that's because it's like, yeah, that's how exactly it should have been. Like if they had time to do stuff, it's like, but the show runners wanted to go leave their shit and they just turned their back on this and didn't finish it properly. Like well, we have, go ahead. I was just saying we have these spinoffs that are coming and I mean, if, if they're good, the views will come, you know, like the, the fans of the OG will, will watch it. You know, I think it's yeah. personally, I think it's been enough time to where the, the bad taste in my mouth is already kind of going away. 
I know we got the Daenerys prequels or of the family, rather the Targaryen mm-hmm. family. Uh, we got that. We got uh, what's his face uh, Stark's origins. You know when all that shit was happening. Mm-hmm. So it's like we have we have these other spinoff shows that are coming, and if they're good shows, then yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, who knows, man? Uh, again, it's one of those things where only time will tell. You know, indeed, indeed. Uh, on yeah. So. I mean, who knows? Um, so Spider-Man No Way Home actually broke records uh, for pre-sale tickets. It actually shattered the uh, Avengers Endgame uh, pre-sale tickets. And I know Luis already purchased his tickets. Hell yeah. Uh, how, how difficult was it to get the tickets? Uh, not too difficult. Uh, I bought my tickets at 6 a.m. Uh, but when I jumped not in on... Too s- difficult? Fucking... <laughs> At daybreak, I brought my ticket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when, when I woke up in the morning, I was like, oh, tickets. And so I went to go look. And uh, so it premieres on a Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, for, the, for the initiated, you probably already know that Thursday, the day before, they typically start airing or airing but they start showing the the premiere of whatever Mm -hmm. they don't do midnight releases like they used to back in the day now it's like it'll be the day before uh like around seven or eight o'clock six seven yeah exactly and so um i checked the theaters plural in my area that had imax and dolby all sold out uh, uh, completely. And so I, and, and that was my initial plan. I was like, I wanted to do, uh, Dolby. I love Dolby. And then all sold out. So I checked IMAX. There were enough seats, but it was like separated seats or just the front row. And I'm like, I don't want, I did that for force awakens. I did 3d IMAX front oh. row, like, in X wings over here, I have to like look up, and then like something else who's talking over here. Like it was just such a <laughs> like I couldn't enjoy the film, and then mm-hmm. I had seen it again the following weekend in like a regular movie theater, and I was like, oh, like I miss so much because it's like I'm having to actual turn my because of how massive the screen is. Um, I digress. So I ended up having to book like a regular showtime a little bit later, just because mm-hmm. everything was full. But then I started seeing that they had uh, like the websites were crashing and stuff like, which makes sense. I would imagine it's when the tickets went on sale. Uh, I think it was at midnight the day before the day of. Mm-hmm. So everyone was probably trying to jump in at that time. I came in after all the mayhem. So, uh, but I refuse to let this film be spoiled for me. And you know, what's fucking BS is that, you know, it's sold out because they know that someone's Spider-Man. That's, they know like so, you fucking denying that bullshit. Wait, that makes sense. Like, wait, you're saying you know it's sold out because of the. Uh... You know it's not sold out because of Sony. Sony's not been like. Oh come on! No, no, no. The no, last no. thing was fucking Venom Two, which I don't. I'm not gonna go to bat for, but I will accept that as my. I like Weekend and Bernie's one. I will accept Weekend and Bernie's two. That's how I'm accepting that. You saw but, Venom 2? I saw Venom 2. Okay. I hadn't, but I heard and there's, about the there's a, there's, a, there's an arc there that they just did not take. But that was there. They played it up perfect. And then they just perfect. Didn't do it. Perfect. Considering the end credits, though, it made like they're, God damn it. They made it a very obvious point that they're going to, it's going to be part of the Marvel Universe. So, Everyone's talking about Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield going to be in the new Spider-Man film, and I'm thinking we're going to get surprised with a potential Venom cameo. Like, of course, how is that a surprise? It's in. No, he fucking licked the fucking. No, I'm. I'm just saying in Sorry. this film, like nobody's talked about it. Everyone's talking. Oh, about oh, 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 yeah. Oh, so, yeah. like in the final fight, are we going to have this massive fucking Spider family uh, going up against the Sinister Six? Like. I will I will say that they accepted their their wrong and whether it's the arced whatever or not, like I do accept like that's not the blue white veined version that we got. Like it's like so you're, you're talking about electro. electro. Yeah. yeah. Like I do oh, like wow. that. You speak gas really well. 
I yeah. was like, Venom has white veins. I'm like, are you, oh, you're not sorry. talking about anti Venom? Like that yeah. they're accepting that, but there's no way we're we're getting them and not the other worlds. Come on. I but mean, we got we're seeing the same time villains of uh, Sam Raimi Spider Man. We're seeing villains of the Amazing Spider Man. We could see another Spider-Man. fucking Carnage. We could see another fucking Venom. Still hasn't shot out the fucking webs yet. Like Carnage, Carnage is too big. There's no way they're gonna do that. Like now, we'll, no way they're gonna fit in. Okay, I would think that if they if they try to, this is gonna come off more sexual than I wanted to. If they try to slip it Dude, in, I saw Sandman. What did I see? I saw Sandman, fucking Green Goblin. What uh, uh Doc Ock is in there, mm. but there's discussion about Doc Ock not Lizard. truly being bad. But yeah, it looks like Doc Ock is like helping them. Yeah. So we, whatever speculation. Yeah, I. But I think I saw both Green Goblins in the trailer. Go ahead. Uh, the Sandman we're getting is the same actor from fuck. Can't think of his name. Uh. Thomas yeah. Hayden Church. Yeah, is it the same? Is it Thomas Hayden Church? We haven't seen him forever. Yeah, it's him. See how fucking massive he is, is he this? So like, remorseful. Like, is it like you know what I mean? Like, what made him become? Just when I say change, don't change my shit. I just mean build on what you did. Don't be like, hey, part three. Don't don't remember all that shit. Like, this is what we're doing now. Like, don't make it the same guy. And that's what I mean by don't change my shit. And I mean, I, I had my issues with William Defoe's uh, Power Ranger outfit. For <laughs> How dare you? But um, like when I initially saw the pictures of it in like Time Magazine before I saw the film, then I saw the movie. It, I thought it fucking fit. His voice acting throughout it, like transform. It almost made the mask look like it was making facial expressions because of how well his voice was like yeah. and to just hear his cackle in the trailer like i'm like oh god damn it like god damn it sorry what were you gonna say to us i was gonna say uh i like in an amendment to ashes don't change my shit if it's something like this where it is multi-dimensional and it does yeah. the past shit like the past shit still is going to stand and it's a different dimension where you could like bring in that character and like stuff changes. So it's a different universe. So you still have the original stuff where it's at, but you brought him up to a new different place where you could change it slightly. Like I'm not like, I agree. It's like, okay. Like electro it's like Jamie Foxx was a good actor. The whole blue shit was kind of lame as fuck. It's like, let's do it differently in this one. And we have a reason to explain it because they're in a new universe. Multiverse. Yeah. Yeah. So fuck it. You could go ahead and change it and it makes sense. And you're like, it's okay. It's like, I didn't hate that movie. Yes, that had its misses. But you could change the character and make him look better where he's not fucking blue. He doesn't look stupid or whatever. Right, right. So yeah, dude, and the and the shot for shot recreation of Mary Jane falling off the tower looks mm-hmm. just like the amazing two Gwen Stacy clock tower scene. Like, if Andrew Garfield doesn't swoop in and save her at that moment, oh god, Miss Like, we can even get Gwen Stacy. Uh, go for dude, it. We can even get not Gwen Stacy. It will get Stone. Who who do people want as Gwen Stacy? Like from the beginning, Emma Stone. Emma Stone. Emma Stone. If Emma Stone was Spider Gwen, dude, I'm done. Aren't they? Aren't they saying that it's for sure she's not coming out? Like I could have swore I saw something where it's for sure. That's a cherry on top. I mean, I would believe it. Like at this point, so far, nothing has been confirmed. Yeah, that would be a lot. Toby but- has not been com- supposedly not confirmed, but we've all heard the rumors. It's really heavily rumored, and those pictures don't look photoshopped to me. Um, and then Charlie Cox is like, oh, I'm not in it. And he's been denied it since forever. Mm-hmm. Um, Andrew Garfield saying, he's like, oh, it's Photoshop. It's not real. Drew Garfield is like the one like straight out has been denying it the most. And it's like, all right, bro. Now you're like denying it too much to the yeah. point. Where- See, I'm wondering, I've been thinking about that because uh, I saw an interview with him in, uh, for Tick, Tick, Boom. And I'm wondering if there's, he's speaking in technicalities. Because he's, they're asking him, "Are you in the movie?" And he keeps saying, "No." I wonder if he does the voice overwork. Like, I wonder if he's always in maybe. Oh yeah, he's, maybe he's always in suit. Uh, yeah. 
but it's his voice. So he's like, no, no, no I'm not in that. Like, and so he's being, he's telling the truth, but there's like a. Has to and be a- as a tragedy as it is, it might be the true passing of the torch, meaning for both. And then, you know what I mean? Like, and then Venom, it could be, a, it's, uh, it could be a thing. And, and that is exactly I'm not why. Gonna fuck it. He says tragic a lot, which is going to kill our shit, but clearly it's not. But I mean, if it gives me an actual ending, you know, because we were supposed to get a Spider-Man 4 and then before they rebooted it. And we were supposed to get a Spider-Man 3 before they rebooted that one. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that was because Andrew Garfield pissed off uh, the, the shareholders over at Sony for not showing up to a, uh, uh, to a meeting or was late to a meeting or some shit like that yeah so yeah it's, sure. it's it, yeah it's i didn't hate him i didn't, I didn't hate him i didn't he was, he was yeah I mean, the Garfield, argument was that he was too was cool it, well i didn't think he was cool at all did wrong thing to the movie that was shit like i would have i would have loved to seen more of andrew garfield as, as peter parker and spider-man number part two who's See, part two amazing one was good Amazing too. There was a lot going on. I mean, I still I was one of the few that enjoyed it, but um, oh, Electro, yeah, yeah, yeah. Electro and uh, Hop Goblin, or they yeah, called yeah. Him Green Goblin, but it was Hop Goblin. Yeah. You know what I mean? Did you Did you guys notice the there is a screen still of Electro, a close up? Do you see the arc reactor on his chest? Yeah. The Tony exactly. Stark yeah. arc reactor. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm kind of curious on how all that stuff's going to tie in. If you know that your world is two people, how do you not just go like, just make it in association to Sony and just Marvel handle your shit? Just put my name on that shit. We've all cheated on our homework. Just put my name on that shit. Just or being a part of a my, group. Give me my residual checks. Yeah. Exactly. Just put my name on that shit and fucking handle, bro. Because clearly you have a better everything than. Does that make sense? Like, ah, yeah. Try to make it work, and and I will I will admit like uh, Andrew Garfield was like okay cool. Uh, Tom Holland took the torch from me from Tobey Maguire, but Tom Holland, it was the scene of I don't know what I'm doing, but I know I have to take the fucking like he was so happy like. Hey, Captain America, and I have to ha- I have to fight you, but I don't want to fight you. And it was the like doing everything to keep you safe, but fighting my hero. Mm. Just, the only thing he he just he didn't have that that Deadpool esque esque not Deadpool like Deadpool, but Deadpool Quits. you know. But at the same time, he doesn't become that until Spider Man now comes becoming right. adult confident. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was going to say is like they did it right with Tom Holland because he's like a teenager in the comics where he became not there yet. He's learning. So it's like perfect where Tobey Maguire is motherfucking 35 years old playing a 18 year old. Like, all right, I'm going to suspend disbelief on this uh, because Toby's a good and the writing's good and I want Spider-Man. I love Spider-Man. So fuck it. Let's do it. But you can't tell me, because because you had mentioned that, okay, Tobey Maguire passed the torch to Tom Holland, and you're fucking, like, you're saying Andrew Garfield's what, oh, passable. Yeah. Emo, dancing, Tobey Maguire did not ruin that for you. How, how did it not? It, 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 it. When you see that trailer, when Venom's fucking pulling on his neck, and fucking San, uh, San, uh, Sandman? Yeah, oh, it's punching Sandman him. Is just fucking beating on him. Uh, will fucking Sa- uh, Spider-Man die? I'm going by what you portrayed to me. And I lost my shit when he punched Mary Jane. And I was like, no, this is, I'm out. Like, that was not Spider-Man. And I get that that was supposed to be the pinnacle of, oh, this suit is making me a symbiote is making me whatever but it was kind of more like it's the same thing that i thought about carnage Car- carnage carnage carmen <laughs> carnage 
even as crazy, spoiler alert, even as crazy as she was, there should have been a moment where... Are we talking about Carmen or Carnage? I never said Carmage. Carmage. Carnage. You keep (laughs) saying Carmage. And you also refer to Carnage as she. Venom 2. Venom 2, Carnage wanted to kill the girlfriend. Okay. How is that not the conflict? It's the same conflict of Pete not wanting to be Black Spider Man, like that. The the inner no, like that should have been the biggest everything. Like mm-hmm. Spider Man, pretty much only should have or Venom only should have won because uh, Cassidy is fighting within Carnage, stopping him. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, and yeah. and that didn't happen, especially when Venom goes like, "That's a red one." So you know the red one is the kill all, be all, fuck everybody. So the only thing he cares about in this entire thing, this killer of killers, cares about one thing. Your story was written for you. Carnage wants to kill the one thing in your psychotic mind should have been the biggest the biggest arc like on the clock tower or the church which shouldn't have been a church ever but as he's about you know what i mean like you want the 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 thing that you're attaching to should be like trying to take away from the symbiote stopping even if he came out of his body to take the fucking shot from his girl done better than what you should showed me like we're both crazy but we're good but we're crazy but we're good it was not good that's what story like the only the one thing you fucking care about is about to die that's all it should ever be that's what the story is even fucking doc ock in part two like i don't hate you i don't want to kill you i don't hate you i don't want to kill you but i need to stop you right and that's why fucking part two is like i just want to stop your carnage i don't want to fucking hurt you i don't know that's just my shit like it's you gave us your 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 saving stone for what if you're just crazy then you're just fucking crazy and i need to stop you but that's not the story the story was this and then you didn't give us this. Like, like Jon Snow to fucking Daenerys. You're my one whatever. If she said you're going to be king because I'm going to be queen, he would have fucking said yes. Yeah. And on top of that, you're the one thing I'm trying to protect. But you're going to kill fucking Arya? I got to kill you. That's my family. Like Vin Diesel. Do you know what I mean? Like, give us a stake and say like, that's the one thing I will not pass, and that's where you pass. Done. Like, a dragon trying to kill... Do you get what I'm saying? Like, ah, it just... I know everything's in everything, but that's just the one thing. I only won because you still helped me, which was kind of like Doc Ock, but, like... Yeah. I don't know. And it would have been amazing because in the next world carnage just that's the crazy ass let there be carnage mm-hmm. don't, don't let there be carnage but hey don't hurt my chick but everybody else <laughs> you're dead but don't, don't hurt my chick then that's that's the thing that needs to be in jeopardy yeah that's all it makes sense with that. but uh die hard is a christmas movie go on <laughs> i was like fucking four hours right ago fucking bring it all full <laughs> circle Speaking of Christmas movies, uh, did you guys know that in Home Alone, uh, the photo that Macaulay Culkin holds up that is supposed to be Buzz's girlfriend, that is actually the director's son in a wig? No, that's fucking yeah. great. Wolf. Yeah. 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 It's also PC. Like, you kind of, you're not ready to, yeah, no, I get it. Is the director Robert Zemeckis in those? No, right? Uh, I don't think the director was Robert Zemeckis. Columbus. Uh, Christopher Columbus, right? Oh, Chris Columbus, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's his son. 
<laughs> Shit, that's pretty funny. So, yeah. And then uh, the last piece of trivia that I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with tonight, which I think is pretty, is I think is pretty, is pretty ironic. Um, it says that in the Santa Claus, Dizzy had a strict policy against hiring ex-cons. But Tim Allen, who was arrested in 1978 for the possession of nearly 1.5 pounds of cocaine, was given the exception. So I think this is I think this is funny because uh, Disney has that strict no no policy. They hired Tim Allen to play the Santa Claus, a fun family movie. Then later, because Santa Claus came out in what, like 94, 95, something like that, 96. Sure. Yeah. 2008, they hire Robert Downey Jr. to play Iron Man. Yeah. Uh, and, then they, <laughs> and then when that makes a lot of money, they're like, you know that rule we had? Fuck that rule. <laughs> yeah. We also Please. like money. Yeah. Uh, uh, if I die tonight, you guys, what about the? There are certain. Um, <clears throat> there are certain German icons. Up uh around Disneyland or Disney am I am I wrong? There's is there certain uh I know it's I know Andreas. It's I, I feel I feel you're holding back on saying a specific word. There's certain uh Nazi shit that's around Disney Okay. No. Okay. If I die, that's what I, the last thing I said. But there's certain uh, things that people could look for if they know what to look for stuff. I'm going to have to Google this shit because I. Okay. I've been. Is that the. Is that um, Gilbert? No. Oh. He's asleep. Oh, I heard, I heard a kid. I think it's TV somewhere. Okay. Anyway, but there's a certain uh, German aspect of certain things. And I even take the last shot. I still have the last shot. So, okay. well, Andres, what were you saying? I was going to say that wasn't Robert Downey Jr. brought on when it was like Marvel Studios before Disney uh, just Marvel? Yes. That is correct. It was uh, because Iron Man was done with Paramount Pictures. Ooh. That should have been your trivia. I won, and I'm not even doing trivia. There you go. (laughs) What was before? Uh, Yeah, that was, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I think um, Iron Man, Hulk, Incredible Hulk, the Edward Norton one, and no. No, because the Incredible Hulk was universal. Um, yeah, that's what I think. Single Hulk movie. Yeah. So it. I like, did like during um the Black Widow that they used the same um um. I don't even know his real name. They used Red Hulk. Uh, oh yeah. What, what's his name? General, General Ross. Ross. Yeah. yeah. I did like it was again back to my. You're only creating on top of my shit. You're not like. Uh, it's now uh, Eckhart. You know what I mean? All that yeah. stuff go to to Marvel. They have all their shit in house. They read the characters and they make it all make sense. Like there is, no, like if you go back to like, say you're doing a story like on um, Widow where it's in the past. It's like they brought the character that fit into it. It was the same character and it nails it. So it's like there is like anything Marvel does is they're gonna whatever Easter eggs, whatever previous characters or actors they mm-hmm. use, they'll bring it back. Like uh, I know it wasn't mentioned, like Colby Smothers is gonna be in the series of uh, the Secret Oh Secret Invasion, Secret Invasion. A realist character. It's like that's perfect. It's like she should be like you. You used her. She was yeah. integral. In- aspects of the show and like you have disney plus now fucking use her Mm -hmm. does she maybe she does deserve to be the main character of a movie but you have tv shows that you could use her and put her in and she can be 
a main uh, aspect of them. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah, no, absolutely. I completely agree. So, but um, yeah, I mean, it, the only reason why I didn't bring it up is because it, it was uh, her being cast. It, it, it was one of those topics where it was just kind of like, oh, okay, you know, cool. That Like you were saying on this, they're bringing her back and stuff like that. So, so yeah, but I mean, I'm stoked for it, for her to be back to reprise her role as Maria Hill. So uh, hopefully it'll be, it, I'm hoping it'll be good because Samuel L. Jackson's supposed to be in it. So I can see both of them, you know, teaming up again uh, to, to reprise their roles. So we'll like see. It but that's necessarily a funny buddy cop, but you could have that aspect to it where it's not necessarily humorous, but you mm-hmm. have Beverly Hills cop of the keys. Like that would be cool, but it doesn't have to be that silly. Right but it has that aspect. I agree. I completely agree. So on that note, I'm going to go, we're going to go ahead and let you guys go. Uh, this has been comics. This is episode 60. Uh, we appreciate you guys tuning in, listening, uh, and sharing, uh, our videos, uh, like share, uh, subscribe, uh, to your friends and your family. Uh, check us out on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, uh, and Comics? We are everywhere. Yep. Good night, everybody.